4.2 critical points, local max and local min. Okay, so critical points, when the maximum or minimum function value might occur. Okay, and then that's at the point C comma FC, or in other words, like X comma Y, X comma F at X, however you want to write that. Okay, same thing, either when F prime C equals zero or, or when F prime C is undefined. Okay, so these are the two situations where we get a critical point. Okay, we're going to get a max or min when the derivative is zero or the derivative is undefined. Okay, critical numbers, which would be C, is the point C or FC. That's the critical point. Okay, and the first derivative test. So the first derivative test is used to test for local max or local min points. Let F prime at C equals zero. This is used to determine whether a function is increasing or decreasing on either side of the critical point. Okay, so just as a recall, you could, there could be a critical point here, and you could be increasing on both sides. Okay, so a local minimum, if we have this point here, and the slope is decreasing on one side and increasing on the other, that gives us the minimum. And if the slope, if we have some point, and the slope is increasing on one side and decreasing on the other, then that's the maximum. Okay, but specifically in that order. Decreasing, increasing, increasing, decreasing. Okay, so when moving left to right, and don't forget left to right is how we re read graphs okay, through x values, if the derivative sign, uh, if the derivative changes sign from negative to positive at that point, then there's a minimum. If the derivative changes sign from positive to negative at that point, then there's a local maximum. And if the derivative equals zero, this may imply something other than a min or max, such a or at that point, such as the derivative does not exist at that point, or such as a cusp or a corner. Okay, and then here's a recall note. Critical points that occur when the derivative equals zero, so dy by dx, give the locations of horizontal tangents on the graph of the function. Critical points that occur when the derivative dy by dx equals undefined give the locations of either vertical tangents or cusps, okay, where no tangent exists. So as a recall, I'm going to recall, um, I'm going to give you an example of a vertical tangent, but um, local max and min values of a function are called local extrema. Okay, in regards to a vertical tangent, that occurs when you have some function. Here, I'll move this over. So we could have a function that looks like this. Like that. And just for a split second right here, there's going to be a vertical tangent. And because it's vertical, it's undefined. Okay, local maximums and minimums. Every local maximum and minimum value of a function occurs at a critical point of the function. Okay, a local max or local min does not have to be an absolute max or absolute min, just the maximum or minimum in the area of that graph. Okay, so here is the start. So this entire unit, we're kind of going to build on the algorithm for um, sketching functions, okay, sketching the derivative and reading the derivative function to sketch the original and vice versa. So we're going to start with the algorithm for finding local max and min values of a function f. So number one, what we're going to do is we're going to find critical numbers of the function. That is, determine where f prime at x equals 0 and where f prime at x is undefined. 
Okay, so this is important. Okay, for all x values in the domain of f. Then what we're going to do is number two. We're going to use the first derivative to analyze whether f is increasing or decreasing on either side of the critical number. Okay, increasing, decreasing on either side. Then number three, based on your findings in step two, conclude whether each critical number locates a local maximum of the function or a local minimum or neither. Okay, so example one. For the function y equals x to the 4 minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared, determine all the critical numbers. So I'm going to rewrite this at first, x to the 4 minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared. To find critical numbers, we know that we have to find the derivative. So let's go dy by dx. Let's use that notation. Okay, so we get 4x cubed minus, bring the 3 down, 24x squared, bring the 2 down, plus 36x. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to determine, number one, where the, when that equals zero. So simply set it equal to zero. So we know that we have to factor this in order to find out when this function equals zero. So let's divide out the common factor of 4x because each of these terms have a 4x in it. And then we get 4x and we're left with x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, so for this trinomial, what two numbers multiply to 9 and add to negative 6? So what are the factors of 9? 1, 9, 3, and 3. So we're going to get two factors, x minus 3 and x minus 3. In other words, if you wanted to simplify that, you can simplify it to x minus 3 squared. Now, the two critical points are when 4x equals 0 and the other bracket, x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so the critical points that we have are x equals 0 and x equals 3. Okay, to find the actual point, um, so we have 0, comma, that's going to be 0, comma, 0. And then we have 3 comma, and we want to sub that 3 back into the original. So the original up here. Okay, there is an x term in each of these, that's why we have 0 comma 0. When we sub the 3 in here, so 3 to the exponent 4 minus 8 times 3 cubed plus 18 times 3 squared, we get the answer of negative 269. All right, 27. Okay, so what we want to do, so we have the two critical points. What we want to do is we want to make a chart. Okay, so on the way down the chart, we want to break up this equation into all of the factors. So one of the factors is 4x, and one of the factors is x minus 3 squared. Okay, and there's going to be potential turnaround points at 0 and 3. Okay, so we're going to go from negative infinity, 0, 3, and then infinity. Okay, and we're going to choose a number in between each one of these numbers to plug into the equation. So this right here represents f prime at x. Right, it represents the slope. What is the slope doing? Okay, so what's the number between negative infinity and 0? I'm going to choose negative 1. 0 and 3, I'm going to choose 1. 3 and infinity, I'm going to choose 4. So we just have to mark whether each one of these factors is going to be positive or negative. The thing is, 
um, at the end, we're going to conclude because if we take a look at all the factors of any polynomial rational um, and we take a look at like the positives and the negatives and how they play out, we're going to be able to get the, the overall sign and then that's going to determine whether or not we're increasing or decreasing. So um, for x, if we subbed in negative 1, we'd get negative, 1, we'd get positive, and 4, we'd get positive. Now, see how we have an x minus 3 squared? Since this is squared, no matter what number turns up in that bracket, we're squaring it, it's all going to be positive. Okay, so what we usually put down here is f prime at x. So a negative and a positive overall is going to be negative, meaning decreasing. Okay, positive, positive overall is a positive, which means increasing. And a positive and a positive is a positive, which means increasing. So this is decreasing, this is increasing, this is increasing. So right here, we can say there's a local min at f at 0. But because this is double increasing, this is neither, neither a max or a min. Okay? So I'm just going to write that, neither a max or a min at f at 3. Example 2. Determine whether the function f at x equals x cubed has a maximum or a minimum at whatever c is, c comma f of c, where f prime is equal 0. So this part of this question is just the theory behind it, okay? So you have to be able to read this and be like, okay, we're actually trying to find where it equals 0 and then trying to find those points if it's a max or min. So the function is x cubed, and that means f prime at x equals 3x squared. If we're going through the algorithm, 0 equals 3x squared, okay? If you don't know that this is x equals 0, you can divide by 3 and then square root both sides, and you're going to get 0 anyway, okay? Okay, so this is 0 comma 0, okay? When you sub in 0 for x cubed, we get 0. That is our critical point. Now let's make the chart. So we're going to go from negative infinity, we're going to have a potential max or min at 0, and then we're going to go to positive infinity. Okay? So we could, like we're going to take a look at the slope. What's going on with the slope? That's the important part. And we could break up 3 and x squared, but that 3 is, you know, I'll do it this way. Okay? You can always break these up. However, that 3 is always going to be positive because 3 is a positive number. And then anything squared is always going to be positive. Okay, so choosing a number between negative infinity and 0, say we choose negative 1, 0, infinity, 1, it doesn't even matter because as soon as we put any number into something squared, it's going to be positive. So our overall f at x is going to be increasing, our slope is increasing, both sides, okay, that means it's going up, so this is also neither max nor min, okay, and we can see that on the original function that we would have right here a horizontal tangent, so we'd have a critical point, Okay, but we'd be increasing on one side of that critical point and then increasing on the other. So there's not actually a max or min there. If a graph approaches a critical point at a different number from the left than from the right, this means that there's no tangent at that point on the graph. So there's a cusp or a vertical asymptote. So for example, 3, for the function f at x equals x plus 2 to the 2 thirds, determine the critical numbers, then sketch the graph using graphing software. 
Okay, so we have f at x equals x plus 2 to the 2 thirds. So we're going to go f prime at x, and we're going to bring down the 2 thirds. We're going to rewrite the bracket, and we're going to take 1 away from the exponent, so we get negative 1 over 3. Then, oops, this is a 2. Then we have to do the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. So that we can just ignore. So f prime at x equals 2 over, because this bracket has the 1 third on it, I'm going to go ahead and bring it into the denominator. Okay, so we have 2 over 3, x plus 2 to the 1 third. That's going to be our, um, our derivative. Now, if we're trying to find when this equals 0, okay, all we have to do is set it equal to 0, and we're going to cross multiply. Well, when you cross multiply anything up to multiply by 0, we're going to get 0. This leaves us with 0 equals 2. The issue here is that we know that 0 does not equal 2. And what this means is that there's no critical point. Okay, or we can say it's undefined at x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is a vertical asymptote. Okay, and that negative 2 just comes from the solution from that denominator. Okay, now using calculations, so we have Okay, so what if we had for the x value, because remember, we're looking at x equals negative 2, right? So on the left side of negative 2, we're going to have negative 2.001. And on the right side of negative 2, we're going to have 1.999, sorry, negative 1.999. So if we look at the derivative at these two points, what we're going to get is we're going to get negative 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 7. And we're going to get 6, oh, I think the period's here, 0. 0.66667. Six, 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 okay, what does this mean? This means that x approaches negative infinity one way and x approaches infinity the other way. So bringing this up on Desmos, our graph is going to look like this. So we have um, x plus 2 to the 2 thirds. So uh, we have negative 2 comma 0, and this is a cusp. Okay, so let's sketch that here. So at negative 2, there's going to be a cusp. It's going to go down like this. Ah. Okay, I want to highlight this. So remember, this chart is still talking about our slope. It's still talking about our f prime at x and what that's doing. So if we're drawing tangent lines, it's almost like horizontal, and it's it's negative, negative, negative. It this tangent is approaching negative infinity. Okay, it's not the end behavior because we're not talking about the original f at x. We're talking about the slope. We're talking about the derivative. Okay, and then meanwhile, if we're going in from the other side, okay, almost horizontal. Okay, but these are all positive slopes, right? Positive slopes increase to the right, negative slopes decrease to the right. But right in here, right in our cusp, on the left hand side, we are going to have almost um, negative infinity. And then on the right hand side, the slope is going to be almost positive infinity. Those two things make a cusp. Okay, so here's the conclusion for this. Okay, so when 
f prime at x approaches negative 2 from the left, right, this first situation, comma, x approaches negative infinity. And when x prime, f prime at x approaches negative 2 from the right, comma, x approaches positive infinity. So therefore, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Okay, so right at that, that x equals negative 2, there is no tangent, but it's still a critical point. So there is no tangent at x equals negative 2, but there is still a critical point. Okay, and we can say because it is a cusp. So critical numbers and local extrema. The critical number C determines the location of the local minimum value for a function f if f at c is less than f at x. Okay, that, that just means like if we're reading to the right, for all values of x near c. Okay, similarly, the critical number c determines the local, the location of the local maximum value for a function f if f at c is greater than f at x for all values of x near c. So together, local maximum and minimum values of a function are called local extrema. Okay, when graphing the function, so this is going to go from algebraic to graphing, okay? When graphing the function f prime at x from the graph of f at x, this is what we do, okay? So if we're given the original and we need to graph the derivative function, first we have to identify all critical points on the original f at x, and what we'll do is we'll graph these as x-intercepts on the graph of f prime at x, since we know the slope equals zero. So, critical points on the original. Okay, and then number two, determine the points between each pair of consecutive critical values. Approximate or solve for the slope at this middle point and plot a maximum or minimum at that point on the graph. Okay, so this is going to be approximate. Identify the intervals where the points of the function are decreasing. Um, when the function is decreasing, the slope is less than zero and the y values are negative. And then identify the intervals where the points on the function are increasing. And when the function is increasing, the derivative is greater than zero, so the y values are positive. Okay, so let's do example four. Given the graph of the polynomial function, y equals f at x, graph y equals f prime at x. So first of all, when taking a look at this, this is one, two, three, this is likely um, a cubic function, and we're likely gonna go down to um, a quadratic, okay? So, but regardless, we know that this is a polynomial, and the domain of a polynomial is XCR. Okay, we also know that it's continuous. Okay, so we don't have to worry about costs or vertical asymptotes. Well, costs are continuous, but we don't we don't have to worry about those horizontal asymptotes either. Okay, because it's a polynomial. So, if we think about it, taking a look at f at x, when we locate the max and mins, so for example here and here, how that translates to our f prime at x graph is that we are going to draw those as x-intercepts. Okay, in other words, on f prime at x, we have two x-intercepts, 
at 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. Okay, because they were the max and the min of the original. Okay, so if you want to make a note to yourself, because they were the max min of the original of f at x. Okay, so we did, that's number one, step one. Now step two, it basically says, find the middle point between the two x-intercepts, and it's going to be approximate, but approximate the, the height of the, like, the height of the graph between them. Okay, so between, so we say between zero and one, we get zero decimal five. Okay, so find f at zero decimal five. So because we don't have an equation, we can locate the f at 0 0.5 and approximate the slope. Okay, so the slope of the tangent. So if we take a look at this, the slope's approximately like 1 over 2. Okay, so let's go f prime at 0 0.5 is 1 over 2. That means the slope of what's going on is 1 over 2. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to mark off one half. So one half is here. So this is going to be our turnaround point. Okay, in our f, at f prime at x. Now we're going to think back to what we did uh, in 4.1. And we're going to consider when f prime at x is less than zero and when f prime at x is greater than zero. Okay, so when we take a look at when the derivative or when the slope of the original is less than zero, so in other words, negative, okay, we see that the slopes, like the tangents, are going to be negative all on this side. That means when we're drawing the derivative graph, it's going to be negative in the sense where it's going to cover negative y values. Okay, and then likewise, um, on the right hand side here, we have to assess, okay, so from this maximum point, which is going to be our zero, we also have negative slopes, which means that when we draw a graph, we're going to take on negative numbers. Okay, so f prime at x is less than zero, in other words, negative. That means we say corresponds with the y values. being negative, okay, and that's from negative infinity to zero, and it's also from one to infinity, okay, and f prime at x is greater than zero, in other words, positive, which corresponds with y values being positive. Okay, in other words, on the interval 0 to 1, these are all positive numbers. Okay, and then just a note at the top, and I can do this in another color, we did go from cubic to quadratic. So if we have a cubic f at x, our f prime at x, is going to be quadratic. One degree left.